Good morning. Welcome to Huddersfield Elam Pentecostal Church. We're here this morning at Painting Zoo, as you can see. I'm being followed by a rather wild giraffe. This morning, please do introduce yourselves in the chat. Say hello. Be part of the family. Feel free to engage. Do enjoy this morning's service. If you join us online, that's superb. Maybe stay for a Zoom afterwards. From me, Mike Pogmore, Paint and Zoom. Have a lovely day. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah. If you don't know me, I'm one of the um, leaders who helps with student and rooted ministries. Um, and today we have a very exciting announcement. If you are a student, Listen up. But first, a question. What is the best thing about being a student in a church? Maybe it's the, the opportunity to be mentored by wiser Christians. Maybe it's being part of a church family or getting stuck into um, a ministry. Or is it because Really, let's be honest, the best thing about being a student at a church is the free student lunches. The free student lunches that would usually be happening at this time of year. Now you might be thinking, Sarah, why are you talking about student lunches? Why are you tormenting me? Because they can't happen. We're not allowed in other people's houses at the minute. Well, let me present to you student Meals on Wheels. Yes, we are bringing student lunches to you. All you need to do um, is to contact us either on Instagram, Facebook, or just send us an email at info at hoodelim.org.uk and you will get a student lunch delivered to your door. Um, the first one is next Sunday, Sunday the 7th of November. Um, and I need you to get in contact with us and let me know who you are if we don't know you where you live so that we can come and give it to you um, and obviously we can't come into student accommodation or into flats and houses so I will need a contact um, number as well so that I can ring you um, and then any dietary requirements and it's as easy as that so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it so I hope you are too um, and yeah, get in touch and see you soon. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. It's great that you're with us this morning. Uh, you may have noticed that it's a one Zoom Sunday, so that means uh, later on in about half an hour to 40 minutes, we're going to be hopping on to Zoom to be in a Zoom call together to discuss uh, the message that Andy's bringing uh, in, a, in a little while. And just have a good chat together as well and a good natter so hope you're looking forward to that if you need the link then you might be able to quickly email info at hodelim.org.uk and get that if you've not already but you should have it if you're on the church emailing system so um we're going to start off but though by going straight into having communion together um just bringing jesus to the center of all we're doing this morning so why don't i pray to start with Lord, thank you that, um, you know, we have the technology to be able to kind of meet in this kind of way, even if we can't meet in person. Lord, I, I pray that you will be present here with us now in each of our homes as we come just to reflect on the sacrifice uh, you made for us on the cross when you died for our sins and you rose again to bring us into new life with you. Amen. So if you want to grab your emblems, if you've not already done that, now's a good time. It says in God's word that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, 
He took bread and gave thanks, saying, Take, eat. This is the body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine and he said, Take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. So if you know Jesus as your saviour, you believe in Jesus and who he said he was, then let's just reflect on that, who he says he was, and do take these things in remembrance of him. And if you don't know Jesus as your saviour, or you're not really sure about faith, or not really understanding any of the words from the scripture there, then perhaps just think about what we're saying now and and listen with an open mind for the rest of the service.
going to sing a new song now. It's all about God's promises and his faithfulness. Which is a really great thing to be thinking about at this time. It's really easy to pick up. So let's sing together. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenants and of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness.
From the rising sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Thank you that you are faithful to us and we will praise your name for that. And if ever we find it hard to say, Lord, that you're faithful because things aren't making sense to us here and now, we just look to the cross of Calvary.
your great love forever. that you would help us sing of your great love forever in this life and the next. So we pray for Pastor Andy as he comes to share with us from the word. May you be speaking to us, God. Good morning, everyone. This morning is a Zoom Sunday, so that means after I'm finished here, we're going to be jumping over onto Zoom uh, to discuss and pray together everything that we've uh, heard about this morning. So it'd be great if you're able to stick around and jump onto there uh, after I've finished. This morning, I want to ask the question, as we walk with Jesus, how do we grow? How do we grow? Whenever I'm watching a movie with Eleanor, uh, my little girl, she always loves the moment uh, when a child grows up. And often in, uh, I don't know how to make movies, I don't know what this is called, but uh, the, the, little, the little child will morph into kind of an adult. Um, it's done like a fading effect um, of like child morphing into an older person. Some classic moments are in Matilda as she's walking home from the library. Uh, Disney's Tarzan, he leaps off the back of an elephant and swirls through the air, transforms from uh, little Tarzan into man Tarzan. Also, Simba walking across the log with Timon and Pumba, and he goes from being, I just can't wait to be King Simba, to can you feel the love tonight, Simba, all in one frame. Uh, to really push the point home, though, here's some people growing up who you might recognise.
to follow Jesus as your Lord and Saviour and to grow up are inseparable. We must grow. He desires that every day we are connected to him, planted in his word, planted in his presence, planted in intimacy with him, growing as we gain everything we need from him. If you know Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, then you will be growing. But I think we all know at certain points of our lives, we might be growing a bit more than others. So I want to help this morning by thinking about what helps us to grow. Although this morning is a shorter service uh, to give us time to discuss on Zoom, um, I wanted to hear from some other people, not just myself, about what helps them to grow. So we're going to hear from them right now. Things that have helped me grow with my walk with Jesus over the years, definitely spending time with Jesus, spending time with God, reading the Bible, getting to know him more and more as I read about his character, about his love, about his mercy, about his grace, as I studied the scriptures. Also, another thing which has helped me massively over the years is community spending time with people who love God, who challenge me, who encourage me, who give me the motivation to really dig deeper into the scriptures and dig deeper into God's love. But definitely community around church and people just challenging me around why I believe, what I believe, and really helping me on my faith and then definitely family as well have really encouraged me to delve deeper into God's love and to explore and to set great examples of a relationship with Christ and then just having that model to be by fantastic people over the years and then also, another thing that really encouraged me is people that know a lot more than me, wiser people in church just getting alongside me and modelling this relationship with God and teaching me how to read, how to pray and just pouring out wisdom upon me. So yeah, definitely things like that have really helped along with stuff like going to youth, MQ, camp, just getting around like-minded people who love God, who are just there ready to encourage you. Like, you can even go back to like Sunday school, how the teachers there were just there for you, just ready to pour into you and just help you understand how much God loves you. So I'm like, yeah, those are all things which have definitely helped me grow in my walk with Jesus over the years. One of the things that has really helped me to grow as a Christian is reading the Bible with other people. I've loved reading the Bible with my life group at church, but I've also loved reading it one-on-one -on -one with other people. So people who have mentored me over the years and then people who I've gone on to mentor and to read the Bible with. I think it's wonderful when you, you read the Bible with somebody else and you can kind of grapple together and wrestle together with some of the hard questions. You can help each other to see what you can't see for yourself. You can pray together to be applying what God is saying to you into your lives and you can really share openly and honestly. And I think friendships and relationships and groups of people that are centred around reading God's word together and really working hard for the good of each other to apply that to our lives. That's one of the things that when I look back over over my life, that's one of the things that has helped me grow the most in faith. So I'd really encourage you to seek out opportunity, opportunities in, in groups or alongside one other person where you can read the Bible with them and really apply it to your lives. It's a really wonderful way that God has grown me and I hope he has grown other people through me as well. So what has helped me to grow? Well, there's a lot of things that I could talk about. People praying for me, um, attending church, hearing great teaching, going to youth, opportunities to encounter God, all those things. 
have impacted me massively but i just want to focus on one thing today and that is really i guess really grasping god's grace his forgiveness and his love for me um something happened a few years back um when i was 19 i started smoking um just because my friends were doing it we'd go out drinking and i'd have a cigarette before i knew it i was addicted um and i was still attending church uh, still a christian professing christian and um it was difficult because i felt ashamed of it i knew it was wrong i knew i was damaging my body i didn't feel like i could tell anybody i kept it a secret even from my parents um and when i would have a cigarette i'd be like oh well i can't speak to god can i because i'm just disobeying him here but i was trapped i was addicted and it, oh, that went on for a few years until one day i was able miraculously just to tell someone and that was carol reed um yeah and following that i started meeting with mike reed and uh, he basically spoke one verse over my life well he spoke quite a few i'm sure but one stuck and that is romans 8 verse 1 that says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus and he explained that to me it meant that no matter how many sins i commit i'm not condemned i'm not judged guilty i'm forgiven and it took quite a bit of processing and thinking about that verse but i knew it to be true and i guess after a few months maybe six months a year knowing that i was forgiven knowing that god was still gracious with me uh, i eventually gave up uh, smoking with um help of a friend and so i guess my my growth is in part down to having people that i can speak to about things i'm struggling with um, and also really understanding god's forgiveness for me that no matter how many times i sin he's he's already paid the price for it his arms are wide open and he's waiting for us to come to him what do you feel has helped you to grow in your walk with jesus over the years that's a great question. You know, if you want to want to grow and you ask a trusted friend, you want to have a fruitful conversation with someone, maybe ask them that question. What do you feel has helped you to grow in your walk with Jesus over the years? I'm sure you'd have a fruitful conversation. When you think about growing in your walk with Jesus, I wonder, can you think of someone who just being around them, just having a conversation with them, you come away feeling like you've learned something? that you've kind of understood something a bit more, that you've taken a step forward in your walk with Jesus. Maybe you've been given some practical advice that you can go away and put into practice. And you, you almost feel like you're growing just being around the world. Knowing Jesus and being close with Jesus and being intimate with Jesus is that and more. All over scripture, we read of growing in our walk with Jesus. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 2, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Ephesians 4, Paul's talking about growing in church under teaching and support from the leaders in the church. And he says, then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. He said, Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And don't think if you're a bit older this morning... <clears throat> And this doesn't apply to you. Psalm 92, 12 to 14 says this, The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap 
and green. You know, I definitely can think of some, uh, some all the members of our church who, if you don't mind me saying, are full of sap and green. You know, when we've been down here for our services on a Sunday morning and personally in the Grace Center, you know, I see Eunice and I see Sylvia just giving their all in worship to their Savior Jesus. And I see them, if you don't mind me saying, that they are full of sap and green, that they have not uh, settled and not growing and continue to grow even in older age. You know, Jesus himself said, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that I will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. It's to use a phrase I keep hearing on the news. It's baked in. I don't think you're saying that. It's baked into the statistics when they're talking about COVID. But it's baked in, growing throughout the whole of Scripture. Growing in our walk with Jesus Christ is just a part of who we are as followers of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. It sets a fire inside of me, everyone, when I read this. Paul reads, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith for the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow, so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. My passion to see people grow in their knowledge of God. To see people grow so that when life's struggles come, they aren't sunk in the storm, but the anchor is stuck in the bedrock of who God is. And they will not sink. They will persevere because they have grown in their understanding of who God is. I said a few years ago, and I can't remember if it was a preacher at church, or I think it might have been at the University CU. I do not fear the storm when I know the one who controls the weather. But we must grow in our understanding of who God is in order to be like that. So how do we grow? Well, we've heard from Andrea, from Gaz and from Elliot this morning, and I hope that hearing lots of voices, God will encourage you this morning how you might grow in your walk. But I want to share just two brief things with you that I pray will stick in your minds and hearts. Firstly, I wonder if I was to ask you, what is the greatest sporting event that you ever watch on TV or even might be fortunate enough to go in person to see maybe before COVID? Perhaps the Formula One, maybe the World Cup finals, maybe the last day of the Premier League, the Masters, the golf tournament. Um, that's one of my favourites. But my top favourite sports event of all time is something you've probably never heard of. And I have mentioned it a couple of times in my, uh, in my sermons at church. But it's the, it's the CrossFit Games. It's the CrossFit Games, and the CrossFit Games just happened last weekend. Um, and it, it crowns the fittest man and cr the fittest woman in the world. Uh, yet this year, because of COVID, they had to do a limited number of uh, athletes. It was top five and top uh, five women and top five men competed. And it was insane. It was across three days at this ranch in uh, California. And it was the most insanely difficult, physically demanding activities you can imagine. It's incredibly entertaining, but also incredibly inspiring just to see, I guess, what the physical body is capable of doing. I think Iron Man combined with heptathlon, combined with a weird sports day at school, and you get a taste of the craziness of the sport. The all-time fittest man on earth is a guy called Matt Fraser, and he's won the games five years in a row. He's incredible. But when asked this last Sunday, after he just won it for the fifth time, and he literally destroyed the competition with a lead of 600 points. When asked how he stays focused, how he stays hungry, when he is so far ahead of everyone else, how do you keep growing? And he said this. I'm not going to pull out everything here, but it, maybe, maybe God will speak to you for some of it. 
I don't compare myself with any of the other competitors. And that's important. I don't train with them. I can't see them throughout the season. I don't see them in the gym or out of the gym. But what I do know is I have the absolute best support team when it comes to Sammy at home taking care of me, training, my training partner, Tia, my coach, who's my friend and encourager. He's the key. He's the bit I want to pull out. He said, every decision I've made over the last five years has been, is this going to better my performance? You make enough of those decisions, day in and day out, they add up. Eugene Pearson said that Christianity is a long obedience in the same direction. I love that definition. It's a daily, even hourly, minute by minute, asking yourself one question. And I'm stealing this from uh, John Piper, which will not um, shock many of you. And if you know me a little while, you'll know I probably showed you this video. It's one of my favorite videos. I showed it at Rooted only a couple of weeks ago. If you type into YouTube, run a John Piper, uh, you'll watch a great video bit. In it, he shouts, does it help me run? Does it help me run? And I'm stealing that and I'm changing it to a question I want you to ask yourself every day. We're facing hard decisions. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I be thinking this way? Should I say this or shouldn't I? Let me shout it for effect. Does it help me grow? Does it help me grow? I think this is a great question to ask ourselves. And since I thought of this when praying about what to say this morning, I've been doing it. I've been asking myself a lot. It's been in my head and my heart. Does it help me grow? I feel like I need to get it tattooed on my arm. Because it's really helping me. Does it help me grow more in love with Jesus? Does it help me grow in the peace that he desires for me to have? Does it help me grow in the knowledge of God, what I'm doing right now? Does it help me grow in the softening of my heart towards the things that break God's heart? That's something that's been hugely challenging me on this topic. Does it help me grow? Me thinking about that, me watching that, me reading that, you know, constantly just consuming the news or whatever it might be, is that softening my heart, making me more cynical or making me more angry? I don't know, but does it help me grow? You put that in there, wherever, put whatever you like in there. But tomorrow or the next day, the next day, you will be tempted by your flesh and by the enemy to say things, to think things, to do things. And I would ask you to stop and ask yourself, does it help me grow? If the answer is no, then don't do it. Even if it means running like Joseph, who I spoke on a few weeks ago from Potiphar's wife, ringing up a friend for prayer and support, dropping to your knees and calling out to God because you realize this isn't going to help me grow. I need to not do this. If it doesn't help me grow, then I'm going to war with it. God will help me to overcome. Does it help me grow? I want to leave that in your hopefully resonating in your ears, does it help me grow? Before I pray, um, just to say that it'd be great, as I said at the beginning, to stick around to discuss some questions in the Zoom. Um, Tim's gonna drop some questions into the groups for you to discuss on this topic. But let me just leave that practical thing with you this morning. Does it help me grow? Let me pray. Father God, as followers of you, Jesus, we want to grow in our likeness to you, Jesus. We want to grow in our knowledge of, of who you are, of the peace that you give us, of the power that you give us, of the, of the power that we have to overcome sin in our lives. Help us to, to grow in all the different ways you want us to grow. And maybe just this week, in this short time we've had together, just to be thinking, does it help me grow? And if it doesn't, Lord, help us to cast it off, to seek help to overcome whatever that difficulty might be. And I pray a blessing now over our discussions on Zoom, Lord, that they might be fruitful, encouraging. Maybe we might share with each other how we have grown in our walk with Jesus. And I pray that at the end of that uh, session together, we'll feel encouraged, equipped to go into the week, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're back in Yorkshire and we brought some of the animals with us. So, welcome. This is the after service bit, isn't it? You've been, you've seen. I hope you've really enjoyed today's message. Uh, I hope you've been uh, involved in the chat. I want to thank you for coming today. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, but also click on that little alarm thing so you get the alerts as to what's going on. There's, there's uh, meetings during the week, morning devotions, all sorts of things going on. There's a 
prayer meeting on Thursday night. And also don't forget to come after the service for your Zoom meeting. So there's a Zoom meeting for the adults. Kids and youth. So come for the adults, kids or youth Zoom meetings. In the meantime, back to the animals.